This is VOA News. I'm Alexis Strope. Israel's military confirmed Thursday its forces have stormed the main hospital in southern Gaza hours after Israeli fire killed a patient and wounded six others in the complex. AP correspondent Karen Shamis reports. The Israeli army said it was a limited operation, seeking the remains of hostages taken by Hamas. The raid comes a day after Israel's army sought to evacuate thousands of displaced Palestinians who were seeking shelter at the NASA hospital in Khan Yunis. The military said it had credible intelligence that Hamas had held hostages at the hospital and that the remains of hostages might still be inside. NASA hospital has been the latest focal point of Israel's ground offensive. Israeli troops, tanks and snipers have surrounded NASA hospital for at least a week. Surrounded by heavy fire, several people inside the compound have been killed, according to health officials. I'm Karen Shamas. President Vladimir Putin said that Russia would prefer to see U.S. President Joe Biden win a second term, describing him as more experienced and predictable than Donald Trump. VOA's Rick Pantaleo reports. Speaking to reporters ahead of a meeting with NATO defense ministers, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says the alliance's European members and Canada have ramped up defense spending to record levels. And we should not pursue any path that indicates that we are trying to divide Europe from North America. The strength is that we have Europe and North America together in NATO. We have to remember that non-EU NATO allies account for 80% of NATO's defense spending. Concern is growing in Europe about the future U.S. commitment to NATO should Donald Trump return to office. With a war in Ukraine weighing on resources, European leaders agree they should do more without relying on U.S. help. Rick Pantaleo, VOA News. For additional stories 24 hours a day, visit voanews.com. This is VOA News. Greece has become the first Orthodox Christian Christian country to legalize same-sex civil marriage. AP's Lisa Dwyer has more. At Florida's Cape Canaveral. Three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff. Go SpaceX, go I am one, and the Odysseus lunar lander. A SpaceX rocket took Intuitive Machines Lunar Lander for a trip to the moon. Travel time's about a week, and if the touchdown is successful, it would be the first U.S. moon landing in more than 50 years. NASA has some experiments on board as well, hoping to get a head start on a moon mission that's slated for later this decade. I'm Jackie Quinn. The Italian Senate has given final approval. Official data released Thursday showed gross domestic product contracted by a worse than expected 0.3% in the three months to December. That follows another decline over the period between July and September of 0.1%. Britain's Office for National Statistics said the Q4 fall in GDP was the biggest since the first quarter of 2021 in the depths of the health crisis. It further indicated manufacturing, construction and wholesale sectors were the largest contributors to the decrease. The country's economy has stagnated for nearly two years, though the Bank of England expects it to pick up slightly in 2024. Greece has become the first Orthodox Christian country to legalize same-sex civil marriage. AP's Lisa Dwyer has more. Despite opposition from church officials, a cross-party majority of 176 lawmakers in the 300-seat Greek parliament voted in favor of the same-sex civil marriage bill drafted by the prime minister's center-right government. The new law recognizes parental rights for same-sex couples but will not allow gay men to acquire biological children by using surrogate mothers in Greece, an option currently available to women who can't have children for health reasons. Supporters of the bill say same-sex couples will now be able to pick up their children from school, be able to travel, go to the doctor, or take children to the hospital. Same-sex civil partnerships have been allowed in Greece since 2015, but that only conferred legal guardianship to the biological parent, leaving their partners in a bureaucratic limbo. I'm Lisa Dwyer. Elon Musk is looking to move the legal home of SpaceX to Texas from Delaware after a judge in that state voided the billionaire's $55.8 billion Tesla pay package. A certificate of conversion for Space Exploration Technologies Corps was filed to reincorporate in Texas from Delaware, which became effective on Wednesday. Most corporations set up legal shop in Delaware because state law is typically favorable to corporations, and experts say the change could backfire on Musk. For additional stories, visit voanews.com. I'm Alexis Strope, VOA News.
This is VOA News. I'm Alexis Strope. Russia's prison agency says Alexei Navalny, the strongest adversary of Russian President Vladimir Putin, has died in an Arctic prison at age 47. VOA's Rick Pantaleo has more. In remarks at the Munich Security Conference, Vice President Kamala Harris says the U.S. is working to confirm reports of Alexei Navalny's death. If confirmed, this would be a further sign of Putin's brutality. Whatever story they tell, let us be clear, Russia is responsible. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the reported death of Vladimir Putin's top political foe is another sign that Putin holds too much power over his country. The fixation and fear of one man only underscores the weakness and rot at the heart of the system that Putin has built. Russia is responsible for this. We'll be talking to the many other countries concerned about Alexei Navalny. Rick Pantaleo, VOA News. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has signed a bilateral security agreement with France. It comes hours after he officialized a similar deal with Germany on Friday. It is a signal of a long-term support of, as Kyiv works to shore up Western support nearly two years after Russia launched its full-scale war. Zelensky met in Berlin with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who said Berlin is providing another 1.1 billion euro package of military aid. He then met with French President Emmanuel Macron, who said France is providing an additional package worth 3 billion euros. Ukraine signed last month its first such bilateral agreement with the UK. Macron said he would travel to Ukraine by mid-March. You'll find expanded coverage of world news and events 24 hours a day at voanews.com. This is VOA News. Satellite photos show Egypt building a wall near Gaza Strip as Israeli offensive on Rafah looms. AP correspondent Jennifer King reports. Video taken by the Sinai Foundation for Human Rights shows cranes lifting tall precast concrete barriers into place and trucks carrying cement blocks. The foundation believes the construction is intended to create a high security gated area in preparation for Palestinian refugees in the case of a mass exodus. The Wall Street Journal, quoting anonymous Egyptian officials, described an eight square mile walled enclosure that could accommodate over 100,000 people. Egypt has repeatedly warned Israel, and Israel's defense minister said Friday his country has no intention of forcibly expelling over 1 million displaced Palestinians now in Rafah into its neighbor's territory. Preparations on the Egyptian side suggest Cairo is preparing for just that scenario. I'm Jennifer King. Major technology companies signed a pact Friday to voluntarily adopt, quote, reasonable precautions to prevent artificial intelligence tools from disrupting democratic elections worldwide. Tech executives from Adobe, Amazon, Google, IBM, Meta, Microsoft, OpenAI, and TikTok gathered at the Munich Security Conference to announce a new voluntary framework for how they will respond to AI-generated deepfakes that deliberately trick voters. Twelve other companies, including Elon Musk's X, are also signing on. The the accord is largely symbolic, but targets increasingly realistic AI-generated images, audio and video that make candidates say something they didn't or mislead about how to vote. Tech Watchdog said the accord was a positive step, but more action needs to be taken. Judge Arthur Ngoron issued his decision Friday after a two-and-a-half-month civil fraud trial against former President Donald Trump. AP correspondent Shelley Adler reports. A New York judge has ruled against Donald Trump, imposing a $364 million penalty over what the judge ruled was a years-long scheme to dupe banks and others with financial statements that inflated the former president's wealth. In delivering the verdict, Judge Arthur and Gorin backed away from a prior decision that would have dissolved the former president's companies. Trump has denied wrongdoing, and his lawyers have said they'll appeal. The stiff penalty was a win for New York attorney. General Letitia James, who sued Trump over what she said was not just harmless bragging, but years of deceptive practices. I'm Shelley Adler. A Venezuelan businessman who helped hide almost $17 million dollars in bribe payments by an ally of President Nicolas Maduro was sentenced to six months in prison Friday by a federal judge who expressed frustration that his cooperation with law enforcement was undone by President Joe Biden's recent pardon of a top U.S. criminal target. Orlando Contreras had been working with the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration since 2019 to investigate corruption in the South American nation. As part of that assistance, he made several dangerous trips to Venezuela to gather evidence against the businessman Alex Saab. I'm Alexis Strope.